right, so this is, I guess, test video number two. <laughs> <laughs> so I just recorded my um, kind of wrap up video and this is going to be my review video. And like I said before, I'm just testing out some things. So that's why it looks different. I'm using my green screen. Um, this is the first background that I'm testing out. I'm gonna test out some different ones, but that doesn't mean I'll always be using them like this. Um, I tried one recording format with my wrap up video. So I'm trying something um, a little different here just to see um, how it goes. So let me go ahead and get started. Um, okay, let's pull up one of my reviews. All right. So these aren't really in order. They're, the month of um, July, I took the break and didn't really keep track of what I had read from June to July. It was kind of a blur. So I know I read these sometime between June and July. <laughs> um, so the first thing, um, this was a, um, a reading craft book recommended by the um, IWSG uh, book, book club. And we'll be having our discussion for it on the 25th of the month. And here's my review. I really like this book. It was easy to read and helpful. Written for young writers, I feel it has an approachable nature that could suit a writer of any age with an open mind. Um, the writing exercises are really good, whether you're young, old, new, or have been around a while. Ultimately, for me, there was nothing that really made this book stand out from all of the other writing books out there. I definitely got something out of it, but it didn't blow me away. Also, I felt like a lot of the book focused on coming up with ideas or fixing or developing an idea that was lacking. Um, I guess I wanted more in terms of writing technical tips instead of creative tips. Honestly, with a book that has magic in the title, I may have been barking up the wrong tree. Blown away or not, worth reading, perhaps a reread will do me good. Recommend it to writers at any level looking to practice and or hone their creative skills. All right, let's see the next thing on the list. Back to Margie. All right, so next is Murder, Madness, and Love. And um, it, I, it's listed as a five star, but as you can see, it's an actual rating of a 4.5 and I'm just gonna get right into it. So before I explain why I really enjoyed this book and highly recommend it, I must explain why it's not a true five star read for me. It has everything to do with the Lord of the Rings cinematic trilogy. While the finale of that story was satisfying, getting there seemed to take forever. There was one almost ending scene after another until we finally got the final end scene. Um, this book kind of had that feeling to me. The difference between this book and that film, all the almost endings to this book served a purpose I now appreciate, but it drove me crazy while I was reading it. So why I enjoyed this book? It's all about the twists and turns. I made a guess about who I thought the killer was early on without really expecting to be right. Turns out I was, but it didn't make any sense to me when I found out. But of course, this talented author explains it all. Plus, there were so many times when I was convinced my joke of a guess was so wrong and way off. I like when an author has me second and third guessing myself. There is a love story several subplots down that didn't do much for me, but I can see it causing other readers to be really invested in the outcome of it. For me, it didn't matter so much as finding out the killer and seeing how the main female character would cope with it all in the end. On the note of the main female character, I didn't love her right away. Um, I grew to like her, but I liked the main male character more throughout. Not sure what that says about me. In any case, I felt like the main female character 
had some sort of neurological disorder where she kept saying and doing things and then forgot that she said or did them and it drove me crazy. Once the book was finished, I realized it could have been her reaction to trauma, but I wish the author had said something about it. Despite that, I did feel for everything that the character went through and respected her a lot, even if I didn't love her. Despite some of her damsel faults, which um, faults I'm sure I would have in her situation, um, she was a strong woman and it's always good to see that in a story like this. Um, this is definitely an adult read, uh, read teens with parent approval, forced violence and language, but nothing felt gratuitous. It all served a purpose. Highly recommended to fans of thrillers, crime dramas, and hard to solve mysteries. So yes. This was almost a five-star read. I mean, like, no major complaints here. Next up is a Loving Mix, Loving Day anthology. So I'm gonna read the review, which explains why this isn't completely legit. Okay. <laughs> I only read An Imperfect Family by Trisha Drama because she released, um, released it as a standalone short story. I could not find a copy of a Loving Mix, Loving Day anthology, but I will keep looking. While this story has a happy ending, it doesn't always end up that way in real life. Knowing this author is in an interracial relationship tells the reader that she chooses to be positive and optimistic about the ways of the world and potential changes. Well, if she can, so can I. Excellent writing. Recommend it to fans of contemporary fiction and stories with racial conflict. So I couldn't really go a whole lot of depth into it because it was just a short story. And, um, but it was a really good short story and I really want to read the entire anthology. I just got to get my hands on it. So I'm going to work on that. All right, let's see. Next up, They Called Us Enemy. Uh, again, just going to read this. It's very short. It says, I'm still processing this story and will submit a more thorough review at some point, but I don't want to put off adding it to my red list. For now, highly recommended. Educate yourself, experience someone else's reality. Let's all be better. So this is one of those things where I want to make sure I get my wording right. Um, reading this and other books like this, it's always, you know, in some, it, you know what, I'm just going to save it. I'm going to save it because still processing it. Let's move on. Magic Born or Magic Cursed, a short story collection. I enjoyed this collection. I like how all of the stories took place in a unified world and a town called Moon Hollow. This world has strong ties to Atlantis and the Greek gods, so magic is prominent throughout. There was a note about one character having two stories in the collection. When reading the stories, it seemed odd to me that the stories weren't side by side, unless I missed something. Seriously, I don't, I don't think the two stories about that character were like, like in like order, because I'm pretty sure I read one and then read another one later. I'm rambling. Let's keep going. <laughs> um, some of the stories felt more whimsical while others were more emotional, a contrast I usually look forward to in a multi-author multi collection like this, but all of these stories are written by the same author, so that took some, pro some processing. Still, it didn't deter from my enjoyment of the collection. And again, that's more of just a reading style thing, don't want to push, put anyone off on this. I tend to, when I'm reading a book, if it's an author that I'm somewhat familiar with, I expect to hear like a particular voice throughout the work. And, you know, usually that's the case, but I guess where these stories are about different characters, um, the voice changed a little bit, of course, for the character, duh. But I just, I just, again, <laughs> I'm rambling. Let me, let's just finish this. All right. Uh, my only complaint is that some of the stories felt like teasers. I get there. Uh, I get these are meant to be um, partial stories or serial installments, but sometimes it felt like I was having cliffhanger syndrome. That's what I call it when a book ends on a cliffhanger for no good reason, and I'm not happy about it. I guess I just wanted more. So kudos to the author, because basically, a, a lot of the stories when they got to their ending point, I was just like, "Where's the rest?" <laughs> so that's not a bad thing. I just, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to reading more of these stories. 
Despite my mild case of cliffhanger syndrome, I really enjoyed this book and hope to read more about these characters in Moon Hollow, which I believe more books are in the works. Recommend it to fantasy and mythology fans who like short stories. All right, and the last one that I read is The Cure. Five stars here. It's been a long time since I read a good zombie story. I was never a huge zombie fan, but never turned down a chance to be amused by them. I thought this story was very was a very sophisticated approach to a genre that tends that has a tendency to rely on heavy gore. I really liked the main character in that she wasn't that likable, but was so de driven and determined that um, you had to admire her. Not sure if I'm onto something or overthinking things, but something about this story reminds me of Little Red Riding Hood. Aaron goes off to face the big bad wolf and brings more than a basket of goodies. Like, that's all I kept thinking. I don't know why. That's just the impression that I got. In any case, I felt like the author did a great job depicting a strong female character without relying on seductive undertones or dance mold tropes. They have their place in their time, but just not in this story. Highly recommend it to zombie fans and fans of out of the norm horror and science fiction. So yeah, this one, for, I would say for someone who's not really into like zombie stories, they might actually like this one. It's, it's a little different. So that's that. That's what I read in, so yeah, so that's what I read in um, June and July. Again, those were completely like out of order because I don't remember the order. And um, yeah, I'm hoping to do better with um, chronicling. <laughs> I'm just going to do better with my reading list. And so that's, that's all I have for now. I would love to know what you guys thought about some of the things that I read. I'm always up for recommendations. So until next time, stay safe and be blessed.